Cinema has been around for 120 years, and it's generally stayed the same business model, same creative form for those 120 years. Along come new platforms and start to make shifts. Television, radio, the VCR. How are we truly going to adapt to the internet and the big force of change that it is? We as creators, we as audiences, we as business people and entrepreneurs are all seeing our roles change. We're trying to figure out how to take advantage of this new situation and how to really find what it is that we want instead of learning how to like what we are given. We got a great cross section of folks to join us for reInvent Hollywood. It was truly exciting for me and helped me address these questions and problems that I've been thinking about for quite some time. Right now we're looking at, at a landscape which is driven as we now know by these huge blockbuster, sci-fi, apocalyptic, CG vehicles that are generally franchises, the Marvel, the DC Comics, all of those, and then nothing in the middle anymore, and then these very small movies that are struggling to make their money back. You're treating your audience as a disposable commodity that are eyeballs with wallets that you're in, uh, going to engage with for a short amount of time till you get something out of it and then off you go. The, the way Hollywood has adapted is to make sure that there are barriers of en entry, that there is scarcity. Uh, you can make a movie with an iPhone for about $150 but uh, you can't make Spider-Man 11 with an iPhone. We're in this big shift right now where the entertainment economy is pivoting itself and looking at what it means to focus on a world of cultural abundance. The barriers to entry have dropped. It's never been easier to get your stuff out there, to make stuff, to put it out there, but yet it's never been harder to kind of like make a living at it and have help. So you have more stuff and yet often less stuff registers. Anyone can pick up a camera as if it were a pen uh, and a piece of paper. And now we'll also know who all the worst filmmakers in the world are because when anyone has access to a medium, there's very little quality control. Folks are starting to look at what a new business model might be for that. So the, the ability to find maybe smaller audiences, but much more loyal, engaged, and passionate audiences Will become, will become critical. This idea of niche markets, but on a mass scale, because maybe there are only three people who care about experimental film in Dothan, Alabama, but they're gonna be added to by the 10 people in Brussels who also care about it. So that all of a sudden you can have a community and a constituency around just about anything. There are other audiences out there and if Hollywood can figure out how to make a mid-range budget movie and not spend a hundred million dollars marketing it, we might gradually be able to go back to something more like the time when there were other kinds of movies being made. I think what's kind of exciting right now is that there is a multiplicity of models which work for totally different use cases. Everything else in our lives, we're being trained to get things on demand or at least be able to order things immediately, except in the film business. When will the marketplace transform itself to match how people actually behave. The filmmakers are looking at how they need to shift from being strictly a, a, a product model to a different business model that actually involves the audience on an ongoing basis. The next generation of filmmakers, they're millennials. They were born online. And I think to that end, um, we are going to see them taking a, a, a greater role um, in, in speaking with their crowd, with their audience, and, and having that conversation and learning from them. Instead of starting out with, I'm the creator, I want to make this thing, and I hope other people are going to want to watch it, you see yourself as someone who joins in a community of people that are passionate about the same things that are driving you to want to tell a story or to create a work of art, and you listen to them. You know, there's a dialogue happening. It's not just a sort of monodirectional sort of feed of information. The more public you are with people who, who you let behind the velvet rope for any reason, the more you tap into their social networks as they get excited about a project 
we did a Kickstarter campaign on our way to Sundance, which was really successful. So social media did all the work and we didn't have to nudge our family and beg um, and grovel. But the first thing it has to start with is the creator's mindset that they want to be part of a community. Not that they're doing this in service of a short period of time to get something that they want out of it. Having that direct connection with your audience is the only way I see to move forward and that brings with it its own challenges. How do we build these communities and build these followings so that the critical mass becomes great enough so that a filmmaker can have a long career? As a marketer, the biggest adjustment that we made was really to listen to the audience and create marketing around what we were hearing as opposed to creating marketing and pushing it out and hoping that it would resonate. And when I look at Veronica Mars, the majority of people who talked about it who had been backers referred to it as our movie. And when they went out and promoted it online or when they talked to people who tried to draft people to fill theaters with them on opening day, they didn't say, I hope you'll go see this movie that I funded. They said, this is my movie. I you know, wanted it made for seven years. I helped them get it made. When we look at what success meant only five years ago, we don't have to achieve that anymore. Because, once again, the barriers to entry have dropped, the cost of production has dropped. It frees artists up to experiment more. I would think if we care about artists, the whole point is that you're trying to express yourself and do it well. And it's not about, about selling the most. You need to get back to the point where you can actually be honored for being a, quote, failure as an artist by doing stuff that's, that's really, really good. There's one side where there's a lack of risk and um, the, the failure culture doesn't exist in terms of failing fast and learning from it. One of the biggest problems with creators that creators are facing these days is that it takes too long to create. It's a really difficult model to be able to sustain a community around that. So this idea of rapid prototyping, being iterative, sharing more, sharing sooner uh, is, is incredibly important. Now you can make films that fail. So it is now possible for a filmmaker to join the ranks of poets, artists, and musicians, who 95% of whom don't make money a living. I think people's bios should include more things that didn't work too, because in what they learned from them. What does it actually mean to be an artist? What's the value of art? Is that art, is that value connected to money? Does it automatically mean you're going to make a living and all those other questions? Creators now have to address the full spectrum of what their work is, from short form to feature length, to immersive, to story worlds. It's no longer like, are you making a film series or a theatrical? It's like a screen series, really. This is kind of the year I feel like we've all been talking about when everything truly is blurred. Because technology and screens have become ubiquitous, they are an extension of ourselves today, where, whereby the film industry is based on the notion that a screen, the surface on which we can watch a story, is something which is completely disconnected from us and from our daily life. The screen is a part of our reality. Being continuously surrounded by screens, you know, it's an extension of wanting to have the story with you at all times. We, we've sort of been conditioned for many years to just think of, if you're a filmmaker, to just think of your film as a film. It's, it's, it's a 90 minute thing or whatever, and that's all that it is. But lots of things become more than that. They become, they, they develop a, a culture around them. I could care less if someone watches my movie in a movie theater, on their iPad, on their phone. As long as they watch it, they pay for it, and they're enjoying it, so they'll want to come back and see another movie. What was kind of astounding for me was that participant after participant instead of being grim and glum, were optimistic. There was enough to say this was a worthy experiment. We learned from this and we're gonna build upon that and take it further. I'm very excited, I'm hopeful. I know there's a lot of, the old shit needs to burn down because we got a very new exciting time. Change doesn't usually come from within the industry, it comes outside the industry. I definitely think that when the public is activated, when you can organize lots of people, you can make a change. There is an intrinsic value of film as an art form outside of its commercial success. I think the feature film form, uh, as much as it might be in a little bit of trouble now, it's, it's an opportunity for a filmmaker to reimagine themselves. We have to just re always remain curious uh, to whatever's new, whatever we haven't 
figured out yet and and recognize that we're going to have to constantly shift and evolve and adjust i love what i've learned here today i love the idea that there's a that you, each filmmaker is building a community that each movie is building a community and somehow the trick is to build that community with each successive film and for the success of each film to be enough so that you can spend a little more on the next one it's become clear that we can't rely on any one person or any group of people to lead the way it won't be a, a set of stakeholders. It won't be through one segment or another that the future is written. It's up to all of us to determine how we will reinvent Hollywood. Thank you.